What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Jay Anka. And May. And we got another video for you guys. So it's been a minute since I've done some sort of like short film or horror type of video. So I'm gonna be uh, doing some more of those. And if you guys got suggestions or requests for different uh, short films or horror or storytelling videos for, for us to react to, make sure you post that in the comments so we can check those out, all right, y'all? But we got this four terrifying babysitting stories. Let's see if we're gonna get spooked on this, because I mean, we just saw it the other day and that, that was scary right there. So let's check this out, y'all. There was this time long ago that I was in charge of watching my cousin and his four friends while they slept over. My uncle was paying me a hundred bucks to watch them for the night. All I did was play video spoke? games with a bunch of 10 year olds for most of the night. I thought it would be the easiest hundred bucks I ever made, but things took a huge turn for the worse when I heard footsteps coming from upstairs. We were in the basement still playing video games. Two of the kids also heard the sounds. I counted five kids sitting on the couches and neither my aunt or uncle were supposed to be home that night. Right. I swallowed my gum when I realized the basement door was wide open. Ooh. I told them to stay there while I ran upstairs to shut the door. The door didn't have a lock from the inside, only the outside. I called to the kids to hide in the workout room. I shut the TV and all the lights and then followed the kids into the workout room. We listened in the dark as the footsteps approached the basement door and then the horrible sound of the basement door opening. Followed by heavy steps stomping down each stair one by one. One of my cousin's friends were crying. I had to tell them to shut the hell up. Yeah, shut up! I leaned against the door with a chair along with a bunch of barbell weights wedged against it. I listened as the door to the boiler room was opened and a few moments later closed. Screams of children filled the room as the doorknob to the workout room began to turn. I pushed the door with all my might to keep it shut. Whoever was on the other side quickly gave up as we heard rushed footsteps going up the stairs. I heard the footsteps right above our heads moving in the direction of the front door. This was before everybody had cell phones, so calling somebody first wasn't an option. Right. I scanned the whole house, finding that the front door had been left open and all the bedrooms upstairs had been trashed. Yeah, goosebumps. Nobody was in the house, so I called the kids up. A few things had been stolen, but as long as nobody was hurt, we were all happy. It was during a blizzard in Valley Stream. I was getting paid $250 to watch some couple's kid while they went away for the weekend. His name was Matthew. This is the same guy. This took place on the first night, which was a Friday night. It's a different one. Matthew was already supposedly asleep while I was in the living room watching a movie. I got a knock at the door and looked at the clock. It was close to midnight. There was no way I was opening it. Right. Not even 10 seconds later. I heard the sound of two or three men angrily banging on the door, telling me to open up. I felt like my heart was about to stop. I took a peek through the blinds, and there was somebody standing right on the other side of the window. Ooh, I fell back in fear, and after managing to get back on my feet, I, I ran to the kitchen phone first thing to call the police. No, the story! Bathroom, it could take a while for an officer to get here. I was told to take the child and hide somewhere until an officer arrived. They wanted to keep me on the line, but I wasn't thinking clearly in the heat of the moment and hung up. However, it wasn't until I ran through the living room that I realized the banging had stopped. I took a second peek through the living room window. Yeah. Nobody was there now. Cool. I heard the sound of glass shattering from a few rooms over. Ooh. My knees started to feel weak as I realized they had just broken the window and were about to climb into the house. I had to run and get Matthew. I couldn't just leave without him. All right. Of course, when I got upstairs, there was no time left to run back downstairs, as I already heard footsteps and laughter coming from downstairs. I covered Matthew's mouth with my hands as I ran with him into his toy closet. A few minutes dragged onto what felt like half an hour as we sat there in the dark closet. Matthew began to squeal as footsteps on the carpet reached the outside of his bedroom door. There was more than one person. They came inside. 
there weren't many places to hide in this room. I was actually reflecting on my whole life, so sure I was going to die. We heard the sound of a police siren outside, even from in the closet, and then I heard one of the men in the room mutter, Oh shit. I opened the door back up as I heard at least three pairs of footsteps hurriedly rushing down the stairs. They didn't get far, as the police later found their footprints in the backyard, leading to our shed. There were five men in total, and they were all arrested. Wow. Good. I was 15 years old, still babysitting since I couldn't get a real job. This was by far the most horrifying experience of my life. Me and this kid I was babysitting, his name was Mike, were taking a walk with his dog through the woods in his backyard. His dog stopped, ears pointed up straight, and paw in the air. The dog started barking, pulling, and going crazy. He noticed something, and we were nervous that it was a black bear, so I told Mike to turn around black and walk bear. back to the house. I struggled to pull the dog in the other direction, and then I noticed what he was barking at. Beyond a big tree was some guy just standing there, staring up at me. I yelled out, asking to him if he needed something. And with that, he turned around and walked off. I was genuinely freaked the fuck out. I'll be too! I calmed down at this point, so walking back was easier for a few minutes, until yet again, the dog started freaking out about something behind us. I couldn't see what it was, but I was worried it was the same guy as before, and that he might have been following me. I was tempted to unleash the dog on this guy, but that seemed like a bad idea. I didn't look back for the rest of the way back to the house but the dog continued to bark and pull. I did the best I could to run, or yeah, at least walk fast. Dog. Dogs have I made really sure good for a good half hour that we weren't followed to the house, people. checking every window and door routinely. I thought it was safe to eventually play Mario Kart with Mike and forget <laughs> about what happened, but my worst fear came true, when right outside the window in the patio, I heard the sound of one of the toy buckets falling over. Turning on the patio light, I could see that a green bucket full of beach toys and balls had been knocked over. Uh -huh. There was no way some small animal could do that. The dog was once again going crazy barking at something. I told Mike to get me his dad's hunting rifle. Maybe that was dumb to have an eight-year-old get a gun for me, but I didn't have time to think rationally. There continued to be strange noises coming from all around the outside of the house. There were some taps on the windows, chimes being pushed, things falling over. That was the but I eventually caught a glimpse of him through one of oh, the I windows. The yeah. He was walking past until he noticed Where's the ice coming down from the, uh, I lifted the gun up to show him that we were armed. He didn't run away right away, though. He stood there, crouched like some kind of creature, staring right into my soul. He finally walked back into the woods. I didn't sleep much that night, jumping at every small cracking noise. A week later, I got a call from Mike's parents. They told me a creepy-looking man had been stalking their house from the woods. They asked me to describe what the man that I saw looked like again. I couldn't give a good description, as I didn't see much of his face, but I assured them it was the same man. They practically begged me to babysit on a few occasions after this, but I always respectfully declined. That was a while ago, and I have no idea what's become of this family today, and what's become of the man stalking their house. Right. I would frequently babysit back between the ages of 15 and 18. I lived close to a relatively wealthy area where people were more generous in terms of pay. There was never a shortage of need for babysitters either, so I made a decent amount of money. I've definitely had to take care of some stranger kids, but this one takes the prize. Right from the moment I met Michael, he seemed really quiet and weird. He was 12 years old, too, which some might argue is more than old enough to be home alone, but maybe not overnight. They needed me to stay overnight. His parents told me he could be a bit strange sometimes and may need some extra attention. I didn't really need to do much, though. In the room that I would be sleeping in was a huge toy closet big enough to fit a big Lego play table with a bunch of Legos and other toys sitting on top of it. Michael was up there for most of his time building with Legos and other toys, I didn't really spy on him too much, I just let him do his own thing. But I heard him constantly talking in there, as if someone were with him, Right. not play-talking. 
I could only assume he had some kind of problems, and that's what his parents were hinting at. He came down eventually to eat some Someone of the leftovers in the fridge, but <laughs> then went right back up to his closet. It wasn't until I finally told him it was time to go to sleep that he left the closet. I just wanted to go to sleep myself. Sometime in the middle of the night, I woke up to sounds coming from the closet. Sounds of toys, like Legos. I called out to Michael to go to sleep. The sound stopped. The light wasn't on in the closet, so I was confused as to how the hell he could be playing in the dark. I went over to open the closet and turn the light on. Michael didn't seem to be in there. I dismissed the noises. I wasn't a paranoid person. I fell back asleep. I'd say an hour later, I woke up to partial brightness in the room. The closet light was on, but the door was shut. Yeah. I called Michael's name again. I was pissed now. I saw the outlines of feet at the bottom of the closet door, and then heard a little giggle as if Michael were messing with me. <laughs> Heck you know. I knew he was in there now. I marched over and threw open the door, and literally fell back in horror when nobody at all was in there. Oh, Where the two outlines you know. of feet were, there was nothing now. Heck you know. I felt a pain in my chest from the fear. I ran to Michael's room to find him asleep in his bed. I locked his door and laid down on his floor. Just being next to another person made me feel a little safer. I fell asleep on the floor, and when the parents returned the next day, I decided to keep quiet about what I witnessed. I say what I witnessed because I know what happened. Right. I got paid and left. I never <laughs> had to worry about it again. Right. Of course, it still sends chills up my spine thinking about it, and I still have no idea what to believe. And not even babysitting and say, what kind of word is this? <laughs> Forget that. Yeah. After that, you won't be, I'm not babysitting. No. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That's probably why I never did anyway. You never babysat? No. Not even your other cousins. We always had people. We always had somebody else. <laughs> nah. No. 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 Nah, a couple of times I probably babysat. Like once or twice, yeah. But that's creepy. That is very That creepy. is creepy. All those stories are creepy. Very creepy. Don't tell me to come in the house. And then for someone to be like stalking your house. Yeah, that's creepy. That's very creepy. Heck you know. Heck you know. And then like let like in the middle of the night, if I hear footsteps and stuff, and me knowing that I should be like there by myself or like it's just me and another person, another person sleeping and I was just hearing. You noises. never know how you would react, but I feel like I'd be that crazy person. Yeah. Get the hell, hell out of my house. Get out of here. I'm coming for you with a baseball bat. <laughs> Actually, wow. I think I'm. Well, someone broke in your house and you came out <laughs> with a baseball bat? That happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you never tell me that story. <laughs> We, one of the houses I had back in Maine, too, was out in the middle of nowhere, and we used to have people that were in the woods. No go in the woods at night. They were taking the lines from the abandoned house next to me, like, stealing the copper lines, and that kind of freaked me out. Yeah. I called the police, but like that other guy said, it took them forever to get there. Mm-hmm. So, if you guys were spooked by this, uh, video let, let us know in the comments or if you didn't get scared at all and this was just you guys laughing at our reaction to this maybe just use it as a warning to protect yourself yeah you have a baseball bat a gun if you need something 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 but if you guys like our reaction to this push the comments down below like and share with all your friends subscribe to this channel for more reaction videos jay going down for 100,000 for 100,000 subscribers it's your anchor in May. All right. Bye, guys.
She also got crackly voice too. Like that. Rawr, rawr. 